the Morgana team in Genshin Impact has been consistently dominating the Abyss, being the number one most played team in almost every patch. What is the Morgana team? Why is it so strong? It was a common question I still see today, and well, today I'll answer those questions. To get started, the Morgana team made up of Fenty, Ona, Ganyu, and Diona. It is possible to do substitutions here and there, for example, using Kazu instead of Fenty, using Xingqiu instead of Mona. However, the replacements are not as good and it's nowhere close. Because of that, the Morgana team for 99% of the time is fixed into a team structure like this. This also means for a lot of players, it is hard to draft this team because it does require three very specific 5-star characters. Although, imagine not having both Venti and Ganyu, which is the two of the strongest characters in the game, what the fuck are you doing? The team was originally called Wen Morgana when it was first created, which are made up of components of each character name in Chinese. However, when translated, people simply refer them to as Morgana, using it as a reference to the popular League of Legends character Morgana, which permanent freeze you into place, which is exactly what this team does. It permanent freeze the mob into place and delete them. But it is so strong not just because it contains two of the strongest characters in the game, both Venti and Ganyu. There is an incredible synergy between Venti and Ganyu that this team utilized very very well. While Ganyu is most famous for her really really good charge attack from the distance, her elemental burst is actually what drives this team forward. Interestingly enough, Ganyu elemental burst is actually not random. At least not really really random. See if you can figure out how Ganyu Elemental Burst work, and I'll reveal the answers in about, I don't know, 5 seconds. Ganyu Elemental Burst will fire 50 icicles over the span of 15 seconds. However, if you're playing on the mobile phone, which is 30 FPS lock, then you only get 46. Get scam. These icicles are then later split into group of 5 for a total of 10 groups. Suppose you're fighting enemy with 5 or less in numbers, then at least one icicle from each group is guaranteed to hit the enemy uh, per target. So that means that each target is guaranteed to be hit by 10 icicles. If there's more than 5, then the targeting will just be fully random. Let's slow the earlier clip down and pay close attention this time and let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is the first group. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Second group. 1, 2, 3. 3, 4, 5. This is the third group. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Observe how in every single group, at least one hit was guaranteed onto each enemy. But there's more. The icicles are actually AOE, meaning that when they're stuck together like currently on the screen, the icicle will actually hit multiple targets per icicle. Icicle AOE is pretty big nonetheless. Here, observe how the icicle is here, but the helotros on the right still got hit. This makes a huge amount of difference in damage and you don't even know it. So let's consider when we're facing a single hill of and we consider a single group of 5 icicles. What will happen is that 4 icicles will drop in random location, maybe around the hill of and doesn't hit the hill of But at least one of these is guaranteed to hit him. And does this do about let's say 100 damage. 100. However, what happens if we add another hill of in and we put them next to each other? What's going to happen is that this Hillichu is going to get hit by this Icicle and it's going to get 100 damage taken to him. However, because the Icicle is AoE, the nearby Hillichu will also take 100 damage. However, the next Hillichu will get kept targeted by the next uh, Icicle in the same group. So here, we actually have two Icicle hitting each individual Hillichu. So this Icicle here target this Hillichu and this Icicle here target this Hillichu. Once again, this uh, Icicle right here will do another Oh, oops. Once again, this Hillichu right here will do another 100 damage. However, this, because it's AoE, it will do another 100 damage to the other Hillichu. So by fighting two enemy instead of one, we now do a total of 400 damage instead of the 100 damage that we did before. Which means we have four times it out of damage. Let's consider adding a third Hillichu in and let's see what happens. Adding a third Hillichu in means that one more Icicle is now guaranteed to drop onto this uh, Hillichu group. And once again, this Icicle is going to hit all three uh, Hillichu. That means that it's going to do 100 damage to this guy, 100 damage to this guy, and 100 damage to this guy. Now, of course, the original two Hillichu, or the original two Icicle, will also be doing 100 damage to this guy. So now we have 900 damage in total. 
since each hater shoot is now taking 300 damage and there's three of them so we went from 100 damage to 400 damage to 900 damage this right here is actually called a quadratic growth suppose we have n number of enemies then the amount of damage we're going to do is actually going to be n square to be exact it's going to be theta of n square since this is a lower bound because random icicle can still drop and increasing further increasing your damage rather Generally, the more enemy you face, the worse it is for you because your ability cannot hit every single enemy. At best, you play something like Xiao and just do the same amount of damage to every single enemy. However, Morgana actually benefits from fighting more enemy. It actually gains damage from fighting more enemy because it has a quadratic scaling while almost every other team damage will get its trend down. Morgana is the only team that benefits from fighting more enemy. So, how can we possibly get everything stuck together in one place? Maybe we need some sort of black hole. I'm glad you asked because, well, that's what Venti does. Conveniently enough, we do have a black hole that suck everything in. But not only it suck everything in, it also refund you 15 energy to Ganyu, which lets you spam more elemental bursts, which lets you get more quadratic damage scaling, which lets you do more damage. It's just, I don't know what to say except the word unfair. People also have this common misconception that Venti doesn't work on like all the enemy but that's not true once you add the frozen in. As soon as you freeze the enemy they will stay in place which means you can also still easily grip them with Venti's elemental burst. On top of that there's a technique against frozen enemy known as the Mona extension. Look at here how the enemy still have the Mona debuff on them and even if I keep attacking them the Mona debuff do not pop the bubble. Usually, Mona Elemental Burst only gives you a damage bonus for about 4 to 5 seconds depending on your level on it. However, with the Mona extension on Frozen Enemy, you can actually make this 10 to 11 seconds, basically doubling the duration where you get the damage bonus from Mona. I have made a video previously explaining the Mona extension, so feel free to check it out. In terms of the rotation, here is how you can cast it. Start with a Ganyu Yi followed by a Ganyu Q into a Venti Yi followed by a Genti Q into a Mona Q followed by a Mona Yi Finally, the Ona double elemental skill for energy back to the Venti Yi and then back to Ganyu and then you'll do free charge attack here and by the time you do free charge attack your elemental burst should be back up and that's just repeat This team is pretty straightforward to build on Venti and on Ganyu just build like your normal artifact so on Venti, just use like a Stringless or a Skyward Harp if you have one for damage. And then for your artifact, you for sure want the uh, BB set 4 set. And you can either build full Elemental Mastery because with the new buff, full Elemental Mastery is better. Or if you cannot spare a Elemental Mastery set from like your Kazu or something, then building attack is also a fine option if you go that route. For your Ganyu, the Skyward Harp is actually going to be the better weapon in comparison to Amos because most of your damage do come from your elemental burst. And if you don't have a 5 star weapon, then the prototype percent is fine. Uh, for your artifact, of course, we have the 4 set Blizzard Trigger. Once again, just build traditional stat, which is going to be crit, uh, crowd damage goblet, and then attack sense. You don't really need energy on your Ganyu because your Venti is going to refund you energy and you also have the best cryo battery uh, in your party which is going to be Diona. Thinking of Diona, I just slam whatever, sacrificial bow, phonious bow, whatever you want. Uh, the artifact, I just put whatever on her so like I just go HP, HP and HP for the shield and for the heal. Now to be fair, in the Morgana team, because you do kind of perma freeze the enemy, you don't really take damage. So what you could do if you really want is to actually build uh, Diano to be damaging. Uh, this will let you get slightly more damage in when you cast your elemental burst. It will do little damage to the enemy. When you cast your elemental skill, it will do little damage to the enemy. And if you're not looking for the healing, then you might as well look for DPS on your Diano. Although that is going to be a fair amount of resin you have to spend for a support. Uh, and of course, you can put the Noblest 4 set on your Diona. In this case, if you do use the Noblest 4 set on your Diona, just remember to start your rotation with a Diona Elemental Burst instead, which lets you get the 4 set Noblest buff. 
And for your Mona, the number one priority is to make sure that you have over 200% energy recharge. If you're uncomfortable, you might want to go slightly higher. So what I do is I use a energy recharge weapon and then I also use a energy recharge sand. With the new artifacts coming out, this should be a really good option. Um, I do run the 4 set Noblesse on my Mona. Most people like to run 4 set Noblesse on their Mona. Just so you don't have to run it on your Diona, which just lets you get away with building like scrap on your Diona. But if you are running your 4 set Noblesse on your Mona, then you could build anything else on your Mona, potentially something like more damagey. Uh, maybe with the new artifact set, then you can put the new artifact set on Mona and then just put the Noblesse 4 set on your Diona instead. But the number one priority is going to be making sure that you get that energy recharge up high. Mona is not here to do damage. Mona here is just to supply Hydro and supply the buff uh, to Ganyu and Venti. So her damage practically don't matter in Morgana team at all. That's the basic overview for the Morgana team. It definitely is one of the most unfair and broken team. So hopefully you learn what is the Morgana team, how to play the Morgana team, why the Morgana team so broken. I'm very surprised by the amount of people who still don't know about the Morgana team because it is like one of the best, most broken team in Genshin Impact and that's the reason why it has been consistently dominating Abyss. When I say it's unfair and broken, it's not just for clickbait purpose. It literally is unfair and broken. Anyway, with that being said, hopefully you guys enjoy learning a thing or two. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe as always. See you all at Inizuma.